Good evening and welcome to this, our last programme in the series. Tonight we'll bring you the concluding part of our story of the computer which seemed to be sending messages through time. We have the results of our National Premonitions Bureau and the case of a man who claims that his ghostly vision helped save a woman's life. But first, here's Chris Choi. Dowsing, it's been called an ancient art. We know it was used 400 years ago to find mineral deposits. More recently, it's been used to trace archaeological remains, buried caves and, most successfully, water. Recently, I heard about a Staffordshire farmer struggling to keep an artificial lake topped up. In desperation, he turned to a private water company. They called in George Applegate, Britain's top water dowser. He told them exactly where to sink a well. I went to watch the drilling. It seemed to be the ideal test. We're dripping wet. Oh, you must be very pleased. What a magnificent sight! <laughs> Tremendous. Are you surprised about how they actually found it? Oh, I find that unbelievable. How can they be so accurate? I think it was George who said that we got to go down 80 metres and then we find water at 78. Just unbelievable. The farmer had approached an independent water company. Their director, Andrew Morris, called in the dowser. Well, a great success there, but how important was the dowser in that? Uh, w without a doubt, very important, and the, f and the fact is we would never entertain um, attempting to sink a borehole water well for, for anybody without his cooperation. But why is that? Because you, you've got all kinds of geological expertise at your fingertips, like, like these maps. Um, this is a hydrogeological map, and here we can see the property that we're actually on today, where we've pinpointed the coordinates, and it just shows us slightly off the main water bearing strata here so even more so the case to use George the, the dowser to give us that accuracy when we're not on major water bearing land. So the geology could have got you what within a couple of hundred feet? I would say so um, but it, it takes out that potluck situation and gives us something definitely to aim for. So he's taking you right to the spot? Correct. Have you used him a lot? We've used him between 50 and 100 sites and has he ever let you down? He's never let us down. We've hit water on every occasion. They'd sent for George Applegate, Britain's top water dowser. He's found supplies for farms, hospitals, even the Ministry of Defence. When Butlin's holiday camps ran dry, Sir Billy Butlin flew George in to restore their supply. He uses geological maps first and then his natural ability. I can find water in any area and I can feel it five or six miles away. How often would you fail? Well, uh, I haven't failed for the last 15 or 20 years. We all know that the water companies have had a hard time recently. Do you do any work for them? I, I have done a lot of work for them. Which kind of companies? Sorry, I can't repeat uh, confidentialities that I have with clients. It must have been about five years ago I was up here looking for water and uh, it comes down across uh, from by that pole over there down across this way and it shoots down across there. This I'll demonstrate and if I you watch, I, perhaps I ought to have a different rod that shows up a bit better than this one. This is a whale brown rod that I use very successfully. It found a lot of water Saturday morning for somebody. And then we're coming up to it, and just there, I'm standing on top of the water. Now, the reaction, you, had, you saw a reaction there, you saw a reaction there, and there is another one there. And these side reaction bands, the width of them, with the knowledge of the strata, I can accurately estimate the gallonage. Um, and uh, by using other methods, I can estimate the depth. But that is the water just there. So. What were you feeling? <laughs> well, what was making that well, the rods flip, I, I, flip I, I, over? I'll, I'll tell you again what, what was happening. I am projecting downwards. You're thinking about the I, water? Yes. Mm. And the reaction that I'm getting now is purely my muscles breaking down under a reflex action. But is George unique? 
As a child, geologist Tom Williamson watched his own father learn to douse from necessity in northern Tanzania. He's now convinced that water dousers subconsciously pick up clues from the landscape, such as a lush green area on the horizon or a water-bearing sandstone hill. But that's just part of it. He also believes experienced dowsers are receiving information most of us are unaware of. There are a few dowsers who can go beyond this. The ground is, is vibrating all the time, although we, we're not consciously aware of this. But um, distant earthquakes, traffic, aircraft, um, all the time the, the, there, are, there are vibrations in the soil. Now the interesting thing uh, with regard to dowsing is these vibrations are more intense over geological faults, um, mineral veins. Uh, these are precisely the places where, where dowsers have been successful in the past. So what they're doing is, is extending normal abilities? Yes, I would use the word supersensory, um, or supersenses. Is it a supersense? What do scientists say? A physicist in Edinburgh may have some answers. Professor Reddish is doing some classic scientific detective work to find out what's going on. He believes that dowsing is a natural force, just as gravity is, and he can show that it produces a pattern with a regular wavelength. They're all at the same distance. Though, yeah, they? they're so all about eight foot apart. They fall, that's right, yeah. about three metres. So that means that this dowsing effect could be a wave pattern like yes. ones that science already Some knows? Some sort of a field. I think any physicist who carries out these experiments would be convinced that we're dealing with a radiation field. The only question is, what is the nature of the radiation field and where does it originate? So what do you think is being detected when the rods start to twitch like that? Anywhere that there is a structure with a different density to the surrounding Earth uh, is detected by dowsing. That applies to water, is only half the density of Earth and so on, you see. Um, quite a lot of uh, physicists, colleagues, some of them former colleagues, and others who I hadn't met, have written to me and said, uh, I know dowsing works, I've done it myself, but I never dared to say so, because uh, it has such an ill reputation. Well, I'm retired, um, I don't have to have a reputation, you see. Vibrations in the soil, clues in the landscape, reflex action or a radiation field. George Applegate had told me that anyone can do it. It was time I put that to the test. No. You don't want it to. <laughs> I definitely want it to. I don't think I'm going to be much of a rival to you, though. Uh, you can do it. Think it's something pleasant, eating a nice big juicy steak. I, I can feel it now. Not going, it, it's, yeah, there's a twitch, there's a twitch. Yeah. I can feel it's like a thread yeah. attached to the end, just pulling down towards the earth. Yeah. Oh, quite a tension, quite a tension, it's, it's going. Yeah. You've got and it. And that's it, is it? That's it. But you what is causing that? I can well, feel I it keep, pulling I like... I keep telling you what's causing it. So my subconscious mind knows that the water is down there and it's communicating through these muscles. Thank you, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> Like me, all our production team use these dousing rods to find water on George's property. And like Professor Reddish, I began to think a natural force is at work, but nobody's come anywhere close to fully explaining it. Do you ever have a strong